everybody, I'm Anne from the Keller Library, and today I'm going to be showing you how to make an earth-friendly craft, which is a bowl made entirely from old pages um, from magazines. Um, so if you were able to get one of the kits from the library, what your kit included was a bunch of discarded magazines from the library's collection, Mod Podge, a paintbrush, a glue stick, and the instruction sheet. Um, if you weren't able to get one of the library's kits, that's all you need to do this project, so you can totally do that one on your own. Um, the cool thing about this project is it's really customizable. You can make the bowls as big or as small as you would like, and you can feature whatever colors, uh, text, images you like to suit your decoration needs. Um, so I'm excited to show you how to do this. It's really pretty easy and it's a lot of fun. So let's get started. Okay, our first step is going to be to select the pages that we want to use to make our bowl. Um, and we'll choose based on what is sh shown on the page. Um, so you'll have to decide if you want to feature lots of color, lots of white, um, just random. It's all up to you. Um, so as you can see in our directions, um, if this orange block is our whole page, the area inside these gray rectangles is what's going to show the most. Um, so if we look inside our magazine, it's going to be an area here and an area here. Um, so just flip through your magazine, um, and we're using discarded magazines from the library, but of course you can use any magazine you have at home. Um, old catalogs are great. The idea is just to use a recycled magazine um, to repurpose it and recycle in a, for an earth-friendly craft. Um, so what I'd like to do is I'd like to feature really colorful pages. Um, so I'm looking for full page graphics, and I'm going to select pages like that. Um, so when you find a page you want, we're just going to carefully tear it out. And do that for as many pages as you want to use. Um, I'm going to start with 20 pages um, and see how big my bowl can get. Um, of course, the more pages you use, the bigger bowl you will be able to make. Um, but we're just going to go through and pick a whole bunch of pages that fit our desired look. Let's see. Ah, here we go. Okay, so let's just pretend like I've done 20 of them. I'm going to set the magazine aside, and then you, you're left with a bunch of pages that have this ragged edge along one end. Um, so we need all of our pages to be perfectly square, and we need them all to be the exact same size. Um, so I've got a handy paper trimmer. Um, you may have one of these, you may not. Um, you can always use just a handy uh, good old pair of scissors to do this. Um, but a paper trimmer is going to allow you to be a lot more precise and you can cut multiple pages all at once. Um, so the idea is you just line it up here and pay attention to the width of your page because you're going to want to cut all of your pages to be the same width. Um, so I'm trimming it um, based on the way, way I've torn them. I'm, I'm going to be uh, at 7 inches. So I'm going to make sure and trim all 20 pages that I've tear, torn out of my magazine. I'm going to trim them all to be exactly 7 inches wide. So you can see we're left with two pages that are identical. Okay? So once you've trimmed them all, you can set your paper trimmer aside. Again, we're pretending like I have more than two pages here. Okay, um, starting with the first one, we're going to start folding them now. Um, so the side of the page that you want to uh, show on your bowl, put that face down onto the table, and now we're going to start folding. Um, take your page, first fold is going to be to fold in half, long ways. Um, when I was in school, we called this hot dog style, and then if you had folded it this way, that would be hamburger style. Um, I'm told that's not that common, though. Um, Oh, sorry, and then the next step is we're going to take the two sides and we're going to fold them in to meet this original crease. So you want to be as precise as possible. Um, this part gets a little tedious because we're going to repeat it a whole bunch of times, uh, but the more careful you are, the better your bowl will turn out. Okay, and then the next step is we're going to repeat the last one. So again, we take the two sides and we fold them into the center crease. Again, being very careful and very precise. Okay, and then again, one more time, repeat. Take it and fold it into the 
center crease. Make sure you're, you're ironing out those creases really well so that the paper will kind of lay flat. Okay, so you should be left with a long, thin strip with two flaps that kind of open up from the middle. Um, so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to put some glue on. So you take a glue stick. We've given you a glue stick that's really washable, um, so don't be too worried. It's going to get a little messy from here. Um, but if you're real worried about it, you can always put something underneath your work surface here just to protect it. But we're going to put glue all along this top side here. And then we're gonna fold it along our original crease that we did the first fold to glue the two halves together. So what we're left with is a very skinny strip. One side should have kind of a spine, like the spine of a book, and the other side should have the two halves meeting each other. And it, the glue should be holding pretty tightly from here. So we're just going to repeat this a whole bunch of times until we have as many strips as we want to make our bowl. So the next thing we want to do is we want to select some favorites among all of these strips. Um, so most of your strips are only going to display along the very edge. Um, so you can see here you're only seeing like the spine of this strip. Um, but around the rim of your bowl, you're going to see the entire side of at least one strip, depending how big your bowl is. So, so pick some favorites. Um, I want some that don't have any words on them at all, um, so I've set some here that are going to be just perfect for that. Um, they can be my rim pieces. So set those aside. We're going to use those last. Um, but what we're going to do is we're going to start attaching these all together to make them one long chain. So take two strips. And an important step here is that we need to make sure that we're orienting the strips in the same direction. Um, so you know how I talked about a spine and then the book side? Um, we want to make sure that the two strips that we're using are turned in the same direction. So we want to have the spine of both of them up or the spine of both of them down. It doesn't matter. Um, but basically what we're going to do is we're going to take one strip and insert the other strip in between the layers to make them attach. Um, so the easiest thing to do is to take the strip in your left hand and pinch the two edges together to create an opening. And then the strip in your right hand, you're going to kind of fold it into a V and you'll insert it into there. So we're going to do that exact same thing except we need to put some glue on this one to make it more permanent. So just put a little bit of glue on the tip before we start. So again, the one in your left hand, sorry, make sure you orient them the, the right way. The one in your left hand, you're just going to pinch to open. And the one in your right hand, you're just going to bend to make kind of a V. And then insert your right hand into your left hand, maybe a quarter to half an inch at the most. Make sure you're creating a straight line. And then pinch them together to make sure the glue is going to hold tight. Now we're going to repeat this for all of our strips. A little bit of glue. Orient them the same direction. Pinch the one on your left. Bend the one on your right. Insert between the layers. Flatten it out. And pinch it. And then move on to the next one. I'll show you one more. Orient them in the same direction. Pinch the one on the left. Bend the one on the right. Insert. Flatten. And pinch. Now you're going to start to end up with a real long chain that gets a little unwieldy. Um, so you might need a lot of space, but it's okay if it bends. Um, but eventually, you're going to have a strip that is made up of all of these strips are going to be made into one long strip. Okay, 
I've glued all of my strips together. Uh, so what I'm left with now is a very long chain. And remember, I saved some of those favorite strips, and they were at the other end. So I just want to get to the beginning of my string here, and that's where we're going to start working on our coil. So for this next step, you're actually going to need to provide for yourself a very small piece of clear tape. Um, I didn't give you that because um, you need such a small amount. I couldn't figure out how to give it to you um, in such a small amount. But, um, so what we're going to do now is we're going to start building into a coil. Um, so starting at the end that is not your favorite strips, um, we're going to start wrapping this around itself. Um, so you need to be very tight and it's going to be difficult to get it started. And the trick is to make sure that your coil is curving the paper and not folding it. So you're not creating like a trapezoid, you're creating a, a true spiral circle of paper. Once you get it started, it's a little easier to go the rest of the way around. And we're just gonna keep working and working. One thing I have noticed now that I've made a couple of these is that this very first strip that you're using to build the beginning of the coil, a lot of times you're coiling it so tight and handling it so much that a lot of the ink will rub off of this part. Um, so this layer in particular, uh, make sure you're just cognizant of that when you're selecting what you want the coil to look like at the beginning. And you're just gonna keep wrapping and wrapping as tight as you can, trying not to leave any gaps between. And you're gonna work all the way to the end of your coil. So this part's a little tricky uh, because you can't really stop, take a break, um, or it will come uncoiled. If you can find a way to, um, I don't know, tie something around it, um, push it up against something, um, you could maybe take a break um, and adjust. But for the most part, you're just gonna need to do this all in one very patient turn. And just keep going until you reach the end of your coil. Um, we're not making it into a bowl shape at this um, stage. It's all just going to be a flat coil. Um, so as you're working, you can keep them in line with each other. You can use your left hand to make sure that the coils are all flat against each other. And you're not getting off of that horizontal. It's going to start to get bigger and bigger and bigger. And by the time you reach the end of your coil, you'll see what the diameter of your bowl will be. Um, if you're not happy with that size, um, you could find a way to pause your coil or undo your coil and start over um, so you can add some more strips. Now that we've got a little bit of it wrapped around, you can start to see how the different colors of my pages are gonna to start to feature against each other. Um, so what we're looking at here is the spine side of my strips. If I flip it over, this is gonna be that um, double spine side or the book side. Um, so they have a little bit different appeal. Um, so you'll have to decide between those two which one you want to be the inside of your bowl and which side you want to be the outside. Okay, when you reach the end of your coil, we're gonna want to secure the very end down. 
Um, so I'm going to use a very small piece of tape. Um, you could, of course, um, try using your glue stick here. Um, And I'm just going to cut that a bit off. So what you're left with is a perfect disc of a very tightly round coil. So the next step is to shape this into a bowl. Um, so what you're going to do, uh, first you need to decide which you want to be the inside of the gold bowl and the outside of the bowl. Um, mine actually look pretty similar. Um, so I'm going to choose the spine side to be the outside of the bowl and the double side to be the inside of the bowl. And what you're going to do is you're just going to take your thumbs and you're going to push in and sort of gently start to shape it into a bowl. Now, of course, you have to be careful not to push it too far. Um, otherwise, you could undo your coil. And then I also want to recommend that you leave a very small portion on the bottom here, um, perfectly flat, um, so that your bowl has somewhere to sit on a flat surface. Otherwise, it's just going to be a, a, a hemisphere that will just constantly wobble. Um, would you just work it to be the size and shape that you want it to be? Um, the higher you bring up your sides, the more of your color from your pages is going to show. It's also going to be more difficult to make sure it's even all the way around. Okay, once your bowl is the shape that you are happy with and you're sure that it's all level and straight and as high as you want it to be, now we're going to set it using Mod Podge. Um, so what we've given you here is a gloss Mod Podge, um, which, which will give it a nice like shiny finish. But the idea is that you're just going to take a sponge brush and uh, put a generous coat on here because you kind of want the Mod Podge to fill in the gaps between the strips and also to create kind of a smooth surface across the whole thing. So if you've never worked with Mod Podge before, you'll see it's going on this nice clean white, but it, clear, it dries perfectly clear. So just keep going all over your bowl applying that generous coat. And just be sure to be gentle to make sure not to collapse any parts of your bowl as you go. Okay, once you have a good coat on there, we're just gonna leave it to dry. And what we need is for it to be, um, to lose enough tackiness that we can turn this over to paint the inside. Uh, so we're just going to let it sit and dry for now. Okay, I've left it to dry overnight. Um, so you can see it's gone completely clear. Uh, you can also start to tell that it has locked the bowl into position, so I can't adjust it anymore. Um, and it's also going to hold its shape. Um, so the next step is just to um, Mod Podge the inside of the bowl. So it's the exact same process. Just take your brush and apply a generous layer everywhere that you haven't painted yet. And again, we're just gonna leave it to dry.